Hey, good morning, y'all. It's Erin coming to you from Hampstead, North Carolina. I am just across the ICW from Topsail Island, and um, I'm about to go fishing. But first, I wanted to show you my rig and what I bring out with me, um, just so that makes a little bit more sense while I'm out on the water. Um, so here we have my Old Town um, Sportsman kayak. It is a pedal drive. Um, this will drop down um, when I'm in the water, and I could pull it up if I'm in really shallow water as well. Um, pedal it with here, and here's my prop. Um, I've got a backup paddle just in case something goes wrong with the pedal drive or in case it's super shallow. Um, this is my uh, camera arm. Um, I've got one rod and I've got two, three rods here. My life jacket, that's really important. Um, I've got my tackle box here. This is a bait bucket here. It's got a little special lid so it can't escape. Uh, too well at least. Uh, my bubbler which keeps the bait alive. I've got a net here for any of my fish. This is the fish bag in case it's just an old cooler um, in case uh, I decide to harvest anything. I got a big ice block in there. We just save like old iced tea bottles like the uh, Gold Peak bottles are really good. Um, fill them up almost with water and freeze them and they stay cold for a long time. This is a bump board. It's expandable. That's how I measure my fish. I really recommend something like that if you're in a kayak because um, it helps to keep the fish steady um, and so it doesn't flop out of your boat. Um, this is a like push pole slash shallow water anchor. Um, so I can use that kind of to push around in oysters or um, grasses or I can use it as a shallow water anchor instead of throwing my traditional anchor out with rope. Um, this is a smaller bucket. Um, I've got my cast net in there. And uh, I use this smaller bucket to fill this with water because I've got a problem with my shoulders. I cannot lift this with water at all. So I carry the second bucket to uh, fill this up. And what else do I have on here? These are just like some bungee dock ropes um, that are really helpful um, when docking. And also I use that for my shallow water anchor. And then this is my traditional kayak anchor here um, with some rope. I probably got about 20 feet on there. Definitely don't need any more than that where I'm going. Um, I usually only need about uh, three feet or so. Um, but anyway, I am going to head out. I like to put in like right around daybreak, which is where we are right now, and um, go catch some bait. It should be right about low tide, uh, so bait should be pretty good this morning. Um, I love fishing in the morning. Um, it's nice and cool. The fish seem to be more active, and uh, there's less people out. So uh, I'll check in with you soon. All right, y'all, so I am moving now in the kayak. I'm trying to get my, keep my rope out of my pedals here. Try to find a big school of bait. So I'm gonna head back to where they usually are. See if we can scoop some up easily. We'll see. It's tough when you're moving. It can be real tough when you're moving. I'm just looking for disturbance on the surface. Usually these mullet right now, this time of year, I'm moving in big schools. And you can see them. Unless they're right under the surface. Sometimes they run up right here on these shallows. Oh, there's some right there. I gotta catch up to them. They're small though. Those are small. You can tell by like the pattern that they make on the water how big they are. Let's see if I can reach them. Ah, not a good throw. Like I said, it's hard out here. Yeah, nothing in there. You want it to open all the way up, not, not do some elliptical thing like I just threw. It looks like a big school over here. Unless that's in my imagination, but this looks like a big old school of mullet. Oh yeah, this looks like a lot of mullet. I'm gonna try not to spook it. Let's see if we can just cruise right into it. There we go. So you want to throw kind of in front 
of where the fish are because there we go, that's good bait. Um, you gotta anticipate where they're going. You wanna make sure your weights go all the way to the bottom. There we go. That's nice. I'm gonna get these guys, and I give them some water, and then we'll go fishing. Hey y'all, so I got um, into the creek that I wanted to get into. It was probably about a 20, 25 minute paddle, or pedal, um, and I bottomed out, uh, cause the tide's low. Um, so I'm just gonna anchor up. There's some activity here. I can't tell if it's stingrays or if it's puppy drum, um, but I'm gonna uh, go ahead and bait up some hooks and throw them in and we'll see. Um, I've got my shallow water anchor here. You can see um, it's just like a big stake, stick it in. It's nice not to have to deal with throwing a rope out and everything, especially for me. Um, all right, let's get some bait on some lines and in the water. Past a uh, another kayaker on the way in through the creek I was going in. He said dolphins just came through about an hour ago and probably scared all the redfish out. But the dolphins can't get back to where I am, so hopefully this is where all the reds went. You don't have to cast far from your boat, your kayak. Um, you know, they don't really get too spooked by the kayak. And they'll come right underneath. I've had big swirls come right underneath me before. And then I've got my bait way far out. Oh, this is a big guy. So I don't really know what's chasing the bait out here. Something is. Maybe we'll find out. But that's the other thing about bottom fishing is, especially when there's this much bait around, you know, you just hope that they swim by yours. Oh, I got a little tug there. I think I got a fish on. Let's see. Did it come off? I think it came off. Yeah. It didn't like it. Didn't like the hook. That's a big hook on this one. Pretty sure it's a 6-0. Right back over there. It might be puppy drum in here. They're smaller and they don't like those big hooks at all. Now the big drum, they won't even notice big hook. Oh, oh. Getting some good pulls on this one. I'm just gonna pull this in to make sure there's not a puppy drum on here. I don't want to, uh, no. Sometimes you can't tell if there's a puppy drum on there and that'll be fighting your line for however long. You don't want it to die. Oh, whatever it was. Chomp my bait in half. I don't know what that is. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe a flounder. Let's see what this is. Oh, that's a bigger fish. I think it's a red. Oh no, it's a damn stingray. Uh, yep, that's what it's back here, stingrays. All right, well, I definitely don't want any of that. Oh no, that's a nice drum. That ain't a stingray. <laughs> Holy moly. Let me get this out of the way. You always want to keep your line tight. Oh. <coughs> Come here, buddy. Nice size drum. Tighten my drag down so I can pull them in. Jeez. He's got a fight on him this morning. just ripped. 
that fish had to have been like probably 26 inches. Dang, that's 30 pound leader line. That's really disappointing. But that's fishing. Damn. All right. Time to get some more hooks in the water. Fish on y'all. Oh, he just dropped it. Took my bait. Did it take my weight too? Oh no, I'm out of weight, y'all. Oh no. That's bad. That's bad. Y'all, I got something on here. Oh, he's big. He's big, y'all. Oh, boy. Oh, shit. Come here. Come back over here. Oh, boy. Nice red though. Oh, he's on my other line. Let's get that on the table. Oh, oh. oh my god. This is a big fish. I know I always say that, but this is a big fish. Oh my goodness. It might be top slot. Let's see. Oh shit. Big fish. It might be too big to keep. Line. My fishing might be done after this. Come here. He's way down there. I'm gonna let it rust out because I don't want to do any trauma. Oh shit. Oh man. This fish is not liking it. Alright. Let's get a length on this guy. Holy cow. He is 27 on the dot. 27 on the dot. That's a top slot. That's a tournament fish, y'all. Woo! All right. See if I can get it out of the net without losing him. I get my bag up here. He's going to go in there and come home with me. That's like four dinners. A lot of people say that the smaller ones taste better. I get that. But there are a lot of work to clean. And it's nice to take home a prize fish. I won't do it that often. I'll get a picture of him. Big fish. I, I just hooked another fish. Just hooked another fish. And it's pulling me all over. It's another big one. I haven't even gotten my other fish back. Oh my goodness. Oh 
Oh, they really want to go on the other side of these grasses. Another nice size drum. Come around me. Don't go that way. Don't go that way. Go this way. Oh, shit. Come this way. Come this way. Come this way. There you go. There you go. Oh man, I think I need to stop after this. This is a lot of fighting. Holy cow. Another nice fish. Oh boy. Another big one. Ooh. Uh, all right, come here. Come here. Oh, there's another big one. I'm going to need a bigger boat, y'all. <laughs> all right, well, I don't have any more hooks in. Uh, that's good, so I can't catch any more fish right now. Holy moly. Let's get the big boy out of the way. Oh. And then, let's check out this guy. I want to get him out of the water as soon as possible. Oh, oh, oh. Another nice sized fish. 24 and a half. <laughs> and another nice one. All right, again, these bigger fish, after a fight, they're tired. So I just kind of like let them Oh, he took right off. He had no trouble. Usually I just kind of let them kind of move back and forth in the water for a little bit until you start feeling them come back to life and they'll take off. But that one, he was ready. He or she. She. The, so the big bulls, the breeding ones, they are um, females. That's one reason why we don't keep big ones. Because they need to lay eggs so we can catch more fish next year. All right, well, I'm going to wrap up my lines and stuff. I might head out to some deeper water and see if I might be able to find a trout. Who knows? Um, but anyway, I've got some leaders to fix and some lines to untangle after all of that mess. But that was fun. Um, two nice big fish back to back, taking home a top slot red drum. I just threw this back in and I just got a hit already. Oh, this is, oh I think it just let it go. I can't tell. Yeah, I think it spit it out or it took the bait. That's fine, I'm worn out. So my battery is dying. Um, I'm trying to charge up my other one. This might be the end of my video, hopefully not. Um, hopefully I'll find a new spot, maybe try to catch a trout. Um, but if it is the end of the video and I don't have any more battery, I hope y'all enjoyed my little fishing adventure today. A uh, little fishing adventure with a big fish in a little boat. Um, so I love kayak fishing. It's, you know, you, you get out by yourself. You don't see anybody else all day. Um, you get hyper-focused. It really helps to distract me from my nerve pain. Uh, nerve pain doesn't ever go away, even if, like, you're sitting on the couch. It's not like, you know, you hurt your knee and you rest and you put your knee up and it feels better. Nerve pain doesn't go away. So it's really good to have something to, like, hyper-focus on. It takes your mind off of that. Um, and you can get back in these places where boats cannot get. And Red Drum... They get so shallow that, you know, even if you're bottoming out on your kayak, the reds are still in further than you. Um, so I've really been enjoying exploring out here in the ICW. Oh! Did y'all see that? I think it spit it out though. I think it spit it out. <laughs> that was wild. <laughs> Either that or it took the bait. <laughs> that pulled hard. Um, but anyway, uh, if you uh, suffer from depression, anxiety, chronic pain, if you're just bored, um, rent a kayak and get out there and, uh, and explore.
Um, it's peaceful. Catching fish is awesome. It gives you all kinds of cool birds, sea turtles, manatees, uh, all kinds of nature. Um, it's just really fun. I love it. Uh, so I'm going to check in with y'all soon, hopefully. Um, if not,